Oh, I'm stuck. I'm stuck. Oh, I'm stuck. I'm stuck. Hi, friends. It is another haul video. And this will be different but big. Uh, you're going to see everything that I've picked up during Black Friday and Cyber Monday. And I know you're watching this video probably a couple weeks after that, but uh, some of the stuff, a lot of stuff's online. And so it took a while for uh, some of it to come in. As you can imagine, some of those stores that are running free shipping promotions and things of that nature uh, don't ship it immediately when they're having all of those sales. So uh, it takes a little while. So I'm not gonna unbox anything because it's way too much. Um, my house is kind of in disarray. Um, because um, things that you will see on the upcoming episode of Dub Life that you'll see this Sunday, which should be uh, episode 7, I believe. So be on the lookout for that. Uh, but the first thing I want to do is I have this box here. And this, when I got home uh, yesterday, it's, I had a little packing slip and it said you got a package to pick up from Japan. The only thing I have currently on order uh, from Japan is the Infinity War Thor. And that's uh, the figure arts one, and I don't think that's supposed to come out for a while. So I don't know what this is. I know that Syndicate Santa, Nate Simmons, told me to expect a package. So maybe that's what it is. I think I'll be able to know when I open it. I've already cut it here, but I haven't looked at it. So let's find out what's in this package that has come from MiyabiShop.com, MiyabiHobby.com in Japan. So that, oh, it's, it's definitely a figure arts. I see a shipping box for figure arts, which is quite exciting. So this is where we're gonna start. If I can get the bubble wrap off. Well, it is entirely SH figure arts in Japanese. Oh, I don't even have to open it. I see it. Iron Man Mark III. Blue stealth color. Let me see. It's sealed here at the top. It's sealed on all sides. I'm not going to crack it open right now. I'll show you in a second. But I believe that's definitely from Syndicate Santa Nathan Simmons. So thank you, Nate. Right there. This was a Tamashi Comic Con exclusive. And I know he's been looking out for me trying to find this. So I'll open it up and show you in a second. Appreciate you, Nate. I'll link Nate's channel below. I'll put a tag up here so you can uh, go follow him on YouTube as well. That's definitely what this is. There you see the stealth suit Iron Man. Blue suit. I really love that. It's the shipper box. You can see Tamashi Comic Con. Blue stealth color. Again, thank you to Nate. Here is the first of the black... Friday, Cyber Monday pickups. This is the Ezekiel and Shiva huge skybound statue. Looks like I got number 556 of 1000. That's what the statue looks like itself. The box has got really cool art. This thing's just very large. I don't have a good way to show it to you, but that I picked up that statue from Skybound Shop. This is the rest of the Skybound Shop. Because I'm a sucker, I have both the black and white or bloody or regular versions of all of this. So this was the Comic-Con uh, 15th anniversary Rick set, which I actually like. It's the regular. That's the bloody. That's David's squeaky shoes, if you're wondering. He may come stick his head inside the screen, maybe. David, say touch it. Touch it. Victoria, say rub it. Oh. Aww. <laughs> and there's Princess, both the black and white bloody and the regular. And the new Andrea figure, which I think just came out. So that, along with the Ezekiel statue, is what I got from Skybound Shop on Black Friday, Cyber Monday. And with those, it brings me back where it's just the Season 1, Series 1 TV, Rick, Daryl, and then the Black and White Rick, which I think was Comic-Con that I don't have. And then for the comics, I do think there's a Carl Bloody version from a recent Mega Box. And then there's a Rick regular and a Rick bloody from a recent mega box because I stopped paying whatever it was, a quarter, for the mega box. So I think there's six total figures I don't have all together from all the Walking Dead McFarlane 5-inch. Or really all the McFarlane because I have all the other ones. Uh, so it's not bad. You know, rub it. These three six-scale figures are from different places. This Doctor Who, it's the 10th Doctor, 
which is uh, David Tennant, that doctor. I got from Top Dog Comics during their Black Friday sale in Augusta, Georgia. I have a video about that if you want to go back and look. Then the two serious black Star A six scale figures. That's Order of the Phoenix. This is Azkaban. Picked those up on eBay during the, the I think I had 15 or 20% off coupon. Uh, so I got those on eBay. I'm actually going to talk a little bit more about how you can do better on eBay later in this video. But those are some uh, miscellaneous six scale figures. This next several is just going to be combinations of stores. Some of the boxes are so big I can't get everything in the screen at once. But the Shinron and the um, new Batman Adventures kind of Dark Knight set up there. The little nipples himself are, as well as this, uh, what's that? The Link Between Worlds uh, Link and a Twilight Princess Zelda Figma. Both, all four of these are from Big Bad Toy Store sale. And then this Iron Man Mark I Egg Attack is from the Bluefin online sale. Additionally, I got these three from the Big Bad Toy Store sale. The Vulture... Mark 47 Iron Man, the Homecoming Spider-Man. These are the Iron Studios Battle Diorama series that if you can follow my channel, you know I like very much. So I picked these up finally during the Big Bad Toy Store sale, and they're big, and I have to figure out where to put them, but I think they're going to look incredible. That does mean that the only Iron Studios Battle Diorama series from Marvel, uh, the one-tenth that I know of, is the Rocket and Groot with the Abelisk, like the middle mouth thing from Guardians 2. I have uh, the rest of the Guardians 2 set, but I need to find that one that comes with the thing in the middle so I can complete that set. And here are the Funko Pops. We've decided that we're just going to let the game ride, even while well, literally four feet away filming. We're just going to go ahead and put it on loud and go with it. So whatever you hear, you hear. We got the uh, Hot Topic Captain America and Thanos. Uh, on Black Friday. Found these at Walmart, all of the Thanos Chrome Pops. I got the Dobby, he's, I think he's snapping. The GameStop and that Chase Pork we found at Second and Charles on Black Friday for like $4. So those are the Funko items we picked up. All right, a kind of a varied haul here. Got Play Arts Kai Wonder Woman. This is the Batman vs Superman version. And then the DC Collectibles, Black Manta and Brainiac, uh, a Figma Blank. Those four are all from FreshFigures.com. Then up here from Ringside, I got a Cesaro. I think that was like $2. I got the Milkamania. I think I can open oh, Well, maybe I can't. Yeah, it does reveal itself. So from that awesome day from... Is that, is that a real autograph? That's uh, Huh. I wonder if that's real. Anyway, with Kurt Angle, Stone Cold, and Stephanie, and then a casket playset from Ringside Collectibles. This has like a purple casket and an urn and whatever. Then I got the Storm Collectibles, uh, Hulkamania, and Hollywood Hogan. And that's all from Ringside Collectibles, which if you like wrestling stuff, that's the best place to order wrestling stuff. So these came either from Bluefin or from Fresh Figures. I have all of the Storm uh, bloody Mortal Kombat figures that have come out, but I've started getting the Street Fighter now. So a lot of these are on really great sale. I'm just going to pan over. I picked up uh, one each of the color skin of Tekken as well. So I'm headed down this path, which is another dark hole, but I've been looking at them, especially the Zangi for a long time. So happy to have these picked up. Finally, I got this Dumbledore's Army Wand collection from Barnes & Noble, which hangs on the wall. It's cool. I got the complete 4K Harry Potter collection from Amazon on their, uh, I think it was their Black Friday deal of the day. Then all these other 4K movies are from Best Buy, when Best Buy had their big sales. So I picked up a lot of good ones. All that was quite cheap. Uh, I only buy 4K physical discs anymore to play on my uh, Xbox One X. Everything else I do digitally, but I like having the direct connection for the 4K rather than streaming. Well, I'm outside in my Cuphead onesie, as you do on a rainy, sorry for the noise, Saturday afternoon. But that was my haul for Black Friday, Cyber Monday. Uh, 
again, like I said, we're doing a lot of work around the house right now. So there are many things left to put away and I'll show you that later. Um, however, I did want to talk to you a little bit about eBay uh, scores because it is the time of year where we have a lot of eBay coupons, coupons showing up. So I think that you would enjoy hearing a little bit about my strategy on eBay. Why I'm wearing a Cuphead onesie, I'll tell you that story real quick. We went to Hot Topic like a week ago. They had buy one, get one half off clearance. They had a Negan, I am Negan beanie. I wanted it. It was 10 bucks. It was on clearance. Buy one, get one half off. I had to find another item. There was no other item I wanted from the clearance. So we bought this onesie. And now I'm wearing a Cuphead onesie, even though it's certainly not made for me. Maybe you can see the Cuphead even though this was like $20, so I ended up paying way more for the thing I actually want. Ah, oh, whatever. That's what happens when I go places with David. So we have eBay coupon time. There just was an eBay coupon uh, just uh, yesterday, actually. And this is the time of year where eBay will randomly put coupons, 10%, uh, 15%, sometimes 20% off your cart or one item. A lot of times they're specific to different, you know, only home goods or things like that. But a lot during uh, Christmas time, they're anything. So you need to have some strategies for how you're going to do that. So let me talk to you about my Big Dub's choicest eBay strategies. First thing is save searches. You need to have saved searches. And if you have specific items you're looking for, like uh, the green skull... 2017 New York Comic Con Red School from Mezco. Mezco, for instance. That's an item I need. Um, it's too expensive for me to deal with on eBay. I don't want to pay those scalper prices, but you know, that's a good example. You can save various searches just for that. And then eBay will actually email you every morning with all the new posts that have that. That just gives you an idea of what's out there. But other searches that I like to save are, for instance, SH Figure Arts, because there's a lot of lines in SH Figure Arts that I collect. And I'll have SH Figure Arts as a safe search sorted by auctions ending soonest. So I can just pull up that saved search and immediately I see any SH Figure Arts that are about to end. Sometimes I may only have 30 seconds left, sometimes I may have six, eight hours left. But I can see if there's any auction for something that I wanna snipe. Let's talk about sniping. Maybe or maybe not heard that term in eBay, common term in eBay. But sniping is when you watch an auction until it's just about to end, and then you make your first bid at the very end and snipe it, steal it away from other people that were bidding on it. You can also get sniped if you bid too early, but usually you try to bid with like five, between three and five seconds left on the timer, and you put the maximum amount you're willing to bid. Don't put like $1 more than the bids. If something's at $22 and you're willing to pay 40, put 40. And you'll probably snipe it at you know $28, $30, something like that. Whereas if you tried to go back and forth and bid just $1, $1, $1 with other people, you have a good chance of losing it. So definitely look to snipe bids, but look at things that are about to end. And uh, that's, that's probably the most known normal eBay strategy is to snipe auctions. Another safe search I have is for, we'll just keep with the SH Figure Arts as the search but I want it sorted by accepts best offer as the only form of purchase and newly listed. You could also do this with buy it now, newly listed. I have those as two different searches, but they kind of work hand in hand. Uh, you want to look at newly listed things where you can buy it flat out or make an offer flat out because sometimes people don't know what they have, especially if they're selling something for someone else, ex-boyfriend or a kid that's left or whatever and it's a parent selling something and they just stick stuff up there and so you may go on you say okay somebody lists a hot toy for a hundred dollars buy it now you can believe that thing's going to sell in the first 20 or 30 minutes that it's listed so always looking at things by newly listed gives you a chance to at least scroll through the first hundred in entries and see is there anything that's way underpriced that I wanna either buy it now, right now, if it's low enough, just buy it, or I wanna to try to make an offer on. That's frequent, that's one of my most used things. Another main save search I have will be whatever the item is, hot toy, figure arts again, and I will sort it by 
uh, the opposite of newly listed, time remaining, how much time is left on an item, and by buy it now. This is usually specifically buy it now or offer. In fact, probably I do it more with offer than buy it now. And that's if a lot of people put their buy it now at like 30 days with best offer. And let's say that it's got two days left and it hasn't sold for 28 days. That thing is sitting in somebody's shelf. They're probably frustrated. They really want to sell it. They may need the money for whatever reason. That's when you can start making offers and they may be willing to accept. So look for uh, about to end. Make sure it's not an auction listing because that doesn't help you, but a accepts best offer. I rarely actually do much other than best offer on eBay unless I'm sniping an auction. Uh, the only time I buy it now is if the price is already just really, really, really good and I know it's gonna sell immediately like the last one I talked about. But if people are frustrated an item hasn't sold, they may accept less than they would have three weeks earlier. Finally, let's talk about just the way you do offers on eBay for accepts best offer. Uh, one way to look at it is they can only say no and that doesn't hurt you. So if they have an item listed at a price you're not willing to pay and they have best offer and you list something lower and they say no, you didn't lose anything. That doesn't impact you in any way. Uh, so one strategy I like to do is, let's say that something's 100 bucks and I know it may be worth 100. They might can get 100. Uh, eBay often shows you the trending value if you look at least on a desktop of what that item is selling for. So let's say the trending value is 96, they have it at 100. So they can expect they might get 100 if it's a rare item. You wanna pay 80. I sometimes will just go ahead and throw out 60. Depends on what the item is. If it's a, an item, let's say it's a Dragon Ball Z SH figure arts and its retail price is 55 bucks or 50 bucks. So you know 60, they likely paid retail, they're not losing any money, but they have it at 100. That's not an insulting bid. They may not like it, but it's not insulting. Likely they come back 90, maybe you come back 80 and they say yes, and you get it at the 80 you want it at. But don't go so low, don't put 20, and then they just decline your offer and that's it. You're, you're out of luck. Uh, you want them to make a counter offer. So you make a competitive enough offer where they make a counter offer. If they make a counter offer, you know you have a seller that's ready to sell and they're not tied to the top price. Once I find a seller that will send me a counter offer, I take one more step. I then look at other items that that seller has for sale. Chances are in our world, the things we're looking for, if people are selling one Super Saiyan Vegeta SH figure arts, they have something else for sale that we might be interested in. So if they made a counter offer to me and I offered them a, a 60 and they had it for 100 and they offered 90, well, now I know the seller's serious. So before I make my counter offer to theirs, I go look at their other items. Let's say they have four other things I'm interested in. I will then go to each of those four, make a low offer, not unreasonably low, but a low end offer. In the message, I'll say, I'm gonna combine with these other three items I'm offering you on. I will accept your first counter offer to the first bid if you'll come down to these numbers with the others. So let's talk about the example. They had a $100 item, I offered 60, they said 90. I went and found four other items they had, let's say all four of those were 100, and I put 70 on all four. And I told them, you accept those four at 70, I'll pay the 90 on the first one. More often than not, you're gonna get a whole bunch of accepted offers right away because they combine on shipping, and most of the time on eBay anymore, people have to do free shipping. Free shipping is not free, so they'd much rather put all five of those in one box, send it to my house for $7, instead of send them to five different places for $6 each. So they're already making back money. And it's one process, it's gone. They sell it all, they're done with it, they don't have to pay attention to eBay anymore. That is a fantastic deal. Again, it's the bundle. It's harder to bundle on eBay, but you can still do it. The other thing I do is if you can get into some messaging, maybe they send you an email, which eBay doesn't like it when they send you email, but maybe they have a store or whatever, uh, an online store, and you, you find a way to contact them, then you talk about what else they have, and they may sell you it outside of eBay, which is against eBay's terms. I wouldn't encourage you to do that, but if they happen to have an online store, then you can talk about, hey, well, wh why don't we go ahead and pick up these three items from your online store, also put those in the thing, free shipping, and you're done. So you can still bundle on eBay. I definitely encourage you to do that. Anyway, I hope you enjoyed another uh, Big Dub tutorial uh, on how to negotiate
purchasing a big haul. Hey, uh, you might get a onesie if you want that. One size fits most, not me. It fit, but that's a very loose definition. And uh, anyway, I hope you enjoyed my haul. Again, uh, I got Big Dub, uh, Dub Life Episode 7 that you should see on Sunday. I hope you enjoyed that. I was in um, some in Atlanta, then Boston and LA. You're going to see a lot around some of the redesign we're doing at the house. Um, some various retail stores. I don't think I go to a comic store, unfortunately, in that. And then uh, Dub Life Episode 8, which is coming up in a week or so. We'll be in Orlando and Texas. And then we're into the holiday season. So... I hope you're enjoying everything. I uh, hope you enjoy this midweek video. I'm glad I had a chance to put one out for you. Uh, I had a lot. Great, successful haul on Black Friday, Cyber Monday. There were like price stickers on some of that stuff that was nowhere close to the price paid. I mean, a lot of that stuff from Ringside Collectibles was just a few dollars. I don't, I don't even know that the entire order from Ringside, including those Storm Hogan's and all that stuff, was uh, maybe $80. It was not very much. So, very pleased with that. Uh... Comment, let me know what other type of videos you like to see. Please like it. If you enjoyed it, share it with your friends. And uh, if you haven't subscribed, I'm close to 1,200 subscribers, which is super cool. So I'd like to cross that milestone. And I will see you in the next video. Rub it now. Hey! Squeeze it.